Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Kickstarter explains Xano Mini drone failure, active winglets for citation approved in Europe, the Megacopter UAV sets a record. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 26, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Just because a project is innovative and well-funded through a crowdfunding campaign doesn't mean it will be successful. The tale of the Xano Mini drone has left a lot of people wondering what happened. After the project withered and died on the vine, Kickstarter commissioned investigative journalist Mark Harris to find out what caused the implosion. Harris found a number of factors contributed to the failure. He cited that a video demonstrating the project was misleading and that money raised from the backers was spent too freely and without good budget control. He also found that several technical problems could not be resolved. While about 600 Xanos did eventually ship, the product was the focus of Europe's most funded Kickstarter campaign when announcing it was filing for bankruptcy. Harris said that all crowdfunding sites should do a better job vetting their projects to reduce the risk of failures. They should also make it clear that funders are backing an idea, not purchasing a product. There is always the risk of failure. Tamarack Aerospace Group has announced that the European Aviation Safety Agency granted a supplemental type certificate for its Atlas brand active winglet system to be installed on the Cessna Citation jet and its variants, the CJ, CJ1, and CJ1+. EASA certification for the Cessna N2 will follow shortly, and U.S. certification for all four variants is expected by this summer. Winglets increase aerodynamic efficiency, thereby increasing fuel efficiency. However, prior to the system developed by Tamarack, winglets also required some structural changes to the wing itself to compensate for increased wing loading created by the winglets. Tamarack's Atlas brand active winglet technology incorporates a load alleviation device. This means they provide the aerodynamic efficiency improvements, but do not require additional strengthening structure. The Atlas Active Winglet System is said to increase aircraft stability and smooth out the bumps of in-flight turbulence. The Atlas System will also allow an increase in maximum zero fuel weight. After the break, multi-rotor UAV gets in the record book. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. In case you were concerned that there weren't enough Guinness World Records, here's a new one for the books. A multi-rotor UAV developed by the University of Oslo recently set a Guinness World Record by lifting 61 kilograms, or just over 134 pounds, and held it aloft for 37 seconds. The UAV is called the Megacopter. It has 13 rotors driven by 48 individual electric motors mounted on an aluminum and plywood frame. It was built by students at the Department of Informatics at the University of Oslo in Norway. According to the university website, the Megacopter is controlled by a pilot in the same way that a hobbyist quadcopter would be operated. The motors spin at around 10,000 RPM, and the combined motors generate 70 kilowatts of power. That's about 93 horsepower. The university claims the Megacopter is capable of lifting the weight of a human. There's no word on whether a manned flight will be attempted. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. However, with all this recent news about space travel from SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Worldview, this week we're going to feature some places where you can find out more about the short history of space travel. (music) 
Our first stop is located on the Thomas P. Stafford Airport in Weatherford, Oklahoma. It's a Stafford Air and Space Museum where you can park your plane on the ramp and spend time in a museum dedicated to Oklahoma astronaut Thomas Strafford. The Strafford Air and Space Museum has grown to become one of the premier educational attractions in western Oklahoma. It was selected by the Smithsonian Institution as only one of its three official affiliate sites in the state. Here's another space museum located just across Oklahoma's northern border. It's the Cosmosphere and it's located in Hutchinson, Kansas. The Cosmosphere is a major exhibitor of space memorabilia. Its rocketry display even includes an exhibit highlighting how the German V-2 rocket made space exploration possible. One of its prize exhibits is the Apollo 13 Odyssey Command Module. The Strategic Air and Space Museum, located in Ashland, Nebraska, is another place to learn about and see how the U.S. flew into space. Among its many exhibits is the X-38 Crew Return Vehicle. The X-38 was a technology demonstration vehicle that was a prototype for an emergency crew return vehicle from the space station based on the earlier 1960s lifting body designs. This technology has now moved back into the spotlight as the Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser spacecraft has been contracted by NASA to deliver cargo to the International Space Station. After these messages, WIP Air Maintenance Intern Program is back. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Whippier's Gateway to Success Internship Program is returning for its third year. The program is designed for students pursuing an airframe and power plant maintenance certificate and is comprised of several checkpoints for aspiring maintenance technicians. Textron Aviation has acquired Able Engineering and Component Services and Able Aerospace, an industry-leading repair and overhaul company. Based in Mesa, Arizona, Able provides component repairs, component exchanges, and replacement parts, among other support and service offerings for commercial rotorcraft and fixed-wing aircraft. The U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, attended the Imperial County Airport Aviation Day on January 16th. The demonstration team is training at nearby El Centro, California, and they showed up to volunteer their help at the local event. NOAA will utilize the Enhanced Coyote Unmanned Air System, developed by Raytheon for hurricane tracking and modeling. It will provide researchers an unprecedented perspective from inside storms that build in the Atlantic Ocean. The Coyote is a small, expendable UAS. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Arizona is poised to become a hub for the space tech industry as Worldview, the commercial balloon spaceflight company, has announced that Tucson will become home to its global headquarters, conducting launches from Spaceport Tucson. Worldview will be the anchor tenant in the county aerospace, defense, and technology business and research park, and its campus will include the world's first purpose-built stratospheric ballooning facility. Worldview will also operate the Pima County-owned spaceport, Tucson, Arizona's first launch pad dedicated to space endeavors. Worldview is pioneering flights at the edge of space using its high-altitude balloons and flight technologies. In addition to taking passengers to near space in a capsule for transformative views of the Earth, and Worldview already flies payloads for NASA, Northrop Grumman, and others. Worldview CEO Jane Pointer said, quote, Spaceport Tucson sends a strong message to the aerospace community that Southern Arizona is a new center for commercial space business. Arizona has now joined the rapidly growing list of states in the commercial space industry. Well, that's our program for today. 
Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.